Hello again from Open Australia. The next phase that we need to all get ready for is to reinstate the equipment. So how do we get the sterilizers and the under or on bench washers uh, ready for service again? The very first thing I want to talk about is the main ingredient for both and that's water and water treatment. So if you've, uh, there are many ways to fill water in both types of equipment. Um, for the sterilizers, you might be manually filling with bottled water or you might be putting um, tap water in the top of the ones with built-in iron exchange uh, resin filters, the new range of MOCOMs. Or you might have your own under sink RO, or reverse osmosis water system. Now in that case, reverse osmosis needs to be dealt with because it's a breeding ground for bacteria while in, the, in the dwell time. So the carbon filter up front of the RO removes all the chlorine. We've got non-sanitized water sitting in the rest of the system. So we need to flush that out. And we'll show you that first. Even before we turn on the sterilizers and the washers, we need to deal with that RO. Make sure that all of that biological activity is flushed out. So here's one particular brand. Um, it's, uh, we've turned it off in hibernation mode. So we'll turn that, that water back on and the power back on. Now, this particular unit, the Aquaclave ROP5, has an automatic flush function. Most of the leading brands of ROs will have some way of flushing water off the membrane surface, whether that's automatic, like this one, or it might have a manual bypass valve somewhere in the hydraulic system. Um, what we need to do is manually activate that flush over and over and over again. So for about five minutes in total, and we're, what we're doing is removing any biological activity from the membrane surface and flushing that down the drain so that we're, once we return the RO back to service, we're making high purity water with a very low CFU count. Okay, so over and over again. Once you're happy that you flushed it for five minutes, then we'll go ahead and take a TDS reading. Now there's a few ways of doing this. Um, a lot of the modern autoclaves will have built-in TDS meters in them, so you won't need to do a manual test. But there's still a lot of uh, models around where the, the, there's no way of measuring the TDS from within inside the autoclave. So if you don't already have, already have one of these TDS meters, um, you can get them online, stshealth.com.au has them online. They're not expensive and they're really easy to use. So it's a digital system where you simply take a, a water sample and dip it in and it gives you a number. So in this case, we've got three parts per million or TDS, total dissolved solids. Um, what we want to see with autoclaves is a number less than 10. So less than 10 TDS or parts per million. Now with washer disinfectors, if they're plumbed up so that their final rinse water is plumbed up to an RO, that needs to be better than 20 TDS or 30 microsiemens per centimetre as is what the standard states, different units of measure. So just make sure that the water quality required after your downtime and still meeting the targets of sterilizers, so better than 10 TDS, or washer disinfectors, better than 20 TDS. Then we can turn on the sterilizers and the washers and get them ready for service. Okay, so we've dealt with our water system. We've flushed out any biological activity off the membrane surface and we're ready to turn the water clouds on. Or are we? Now we want to just double check that your compliance is still within date. Depending how long you've been shut down for and whether you're able to get that service and validation done before you close your doors, perhaps the validation has lapsed. Check the dates, contact your MoCom Australia local service agent uh, if you get stuck and try and bring that forward so that there's not a, a big surge of activity just as you're wanting to treat patients. Now, if you do get stuck, if you do find that the, the validation has lapsed and you need to treat patients, there may be a workaround for you. Check this with your infection control consultant. But under the office-based practice standards, so that's AS 4815 2006, 
have a read up of clause 7.3.1.3. And in there it talks about the accessibility of technical support. And it says if, if technical support is not reasonably available to achieve OQ or PQ, so validation, then you could use a class five or six indicator within every pack and every, lo uh, every load until tech support's available. There's a sting in the tail of that clause because it also says if tech support is reasonably available, then, no, then you shouldn't delay those services from happening, but it is a workaround. So a class five or six indicator in every pack and every load if validation has lapsed. Okay, so we've done water, we've talked about compliance. Now it's time to turn the sterilizers on. Now obviously you're going to fill them full of water, whether that's a, a manual fill in the top or open the valves that you may have closed to allow your under sink RO to fill the machines again. Um, and cancel any alarms, there might be low water level alarms, there might be reminders for user maintenance to happen. Now with user maintenance, hopefully you've done that with, just as you entered the machines into hibernation mode. If you didn't get a chance to do that, we made a video for you. It's on the Mocum Australia website for hibernating the equipment and it runs through all the user maintenance aspects. So if that's done, really all we have to do next is a vacuum and helix test. So we run a vacuum test, we run a helix test, and then the machine's ready for you to run your very first cycle whatever cycle type that the technician has validated for your particular load and you're ready to go. So I hope you found this video uh, series helpful and welcome back.